there are outliers yeah. that I actually want this guy that was slow, but he's such a hard worker and a grinder that he's going to excel anyways. Mm. Like I want that guy. And guess what? SEAL training does that. You yeah. don't, If you're a gazelle and you're a really great athlete, it doesn't test you as much as the guy that's a grinder. Yeah. But the guy that's a really great athlete has a little bit more value out of the gate than the guy that's a grinder. Once you show up at the team, though, you want the guy that's a grinder more than you want the guy that's a good athlete. Right. Yeah, so almost like it's all sort of in That's the not a guaranteed every time because there's some guys that were freaking great athletes and they were just incredible. So don't, don't take that one wrong. But necessarily a guy that's a great athlete versus a guy that is just has uh, can gut through it yeah. probably i would lean towards the guy that can gut through it because yeah. he has a level of grit you're not you don't face a pull up bar out in the battlefield right yeah, you're yeah. not you don't you know it's yeah. not there yeah and then that and that makes sense i mean it's all kind of in the same bucket really yeah. but where like these are just attributes right so how how does leif put it he'll say um Buds is just a screening process yeah. to to weed out people who we don't think have the characteristics to be successful yeah. on the battlefield, which is a very eloquent way of putting very it. Eloquent. So those characteristics aren't necessarily who can do the most pull ups. It's not that because look, if you're doing like it, there's a minimum though, right? Obviously, like do you have to do a certain there is amount? the minimum is so minimum to like get to buds. The minimum right. is so minimum it should be disqualifying if you can actually only do that many. Right. I'm not kidding. The minimum pull-ups to go to Buds is something like 10. Right. It's tiny. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. embarrassing. Yeah, so just like how you said, it's like, like okay, we have, <laughs> we have a minimum, and that's sort of it. So who cares if you can do 50? Who cares? Really, we care about other stuff. Yeah, well, there's a well-rounded component, right? And and that's what makes that's the thing that makes SEAL training hard is you can't just be a fast runner. You can't just be a fast swimmer. You can't just be strong upper body. You can't just be comfortable in the water. You can't just be durable. You gotta be all those things. Yeah. And what's hard is they're contrary to each other, right? Oh, yeah. Because being able to run fourteen miles is one type of person that's going to be really good at that. Being able to get through the obstacle course is another person that has a lot of upper body strength. This person has a lot of endurance. This person has, and then you add in, hey, you need to be able to pick up your buddy and sprint with them over the berm. That's explosiveness. Oh, yeah. So we want this really kind of middle of the road on a bunch of different things, yeah. well-rounded, well-rounded, as opposed to someone that's just really good at one particular thing. And there's all kinds of people that show up that are great athletes in one category, and it doesn't work for them. Yeah, so the, the attribute of all the attributes, the attribute about the guy who can gut through stuff sort of lifts up all yeah, those extra attributes if, yeah. they're, if they're not that high. So let's say that's the main one. Then yes, yes, you want the guy who that comes naturally yeah. to rather than the guy who it might f- their teaching may falter later. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I want that to be part of you. Makes sense. Part of you. And man, what a good quality to have. That's the thing. That's that's the thing. People, look, we everyone gets a certain amount of talent. Yeah. You can decide to work hard. You can decide to work hard. Now, now there are people that say that work ethic is a talent, right? I I get that concept. And I think the reason it appears to be that way is because you get people that work so hard that you think, oh, that must be a talent of theirs, right? Yeah. To have this talent that you're going to work so hard. Yeah. I don't, I, well, I think that you have, well, you do. You have way more influence over that talent than you do over your explosive strength. Yeah. Well, I mean, infinitely more. Yeah, because uh, you can't, I don't know, the, obviously I'm no genetics expert, but I don't know that there's a gene or a series of genes that gives you work ethic at the, birth. I, yeah, I, I would say the answer is no. Right? I mean, not, not right? at all, right? I mean, we could check with the bro science like <laughs> schools on that one. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was. But there, I bet, you know, when they start breaking down this genetic stuff, they're going to start finding stuff about people that's going to be really interesting, and some yeah. of it will be tight. I mean, I'm not going Sam Harris. You know, uh, you your every decision that you make is kind of pre-planned, free will. Yeah. But you know, I'm sure Sam and I will have a chance to sit down if he has the courage to to step up to the plate <laughs> and have a real conversation with me. <laughs> uh, but but 
I'm, I bet as this stuff gets uncovered, they will find that there's a propensity right, for, like a, like a propensity for focus. Yeah. Because right? that's what hard work is, kind of. Is just, yeah. hey, look, like when I was going to college and I would get to, I, I would do one semester I took five English classes, which was the dumbest thing I've ever done. <laughs> I would be so crushed with reading mm-hmm. over, you know, during the week, but then on the weekend would come and I'd have to read five English classes worth of reading. And that was when I would be like, okay, I would have to like turn the switch in my head and just go full on sit there and read for 10 hours yeah. and read and memorize, m- remember what I was reading. Yeah. So that was a switch. It was like, oh, and I remember thinking to myself, I'd be talking to other people that had one English class yeah. and they'd say, I'd say, they'd say, did you do the reading? Can you tell me what happened? And I'd be like, yeah, of course I did the reading. And they'd be like, I cannot sit down and read for that long. Mm. And I'd be like, well, A, you don't care. B, you lack discipline. C, maybe I've got a little propensity to be able to turn it on or maybe it's just through force of will look yeah. i want to get an a in this class why because yeah because i don't want these instructors looking at me thinking that they got a little something on me mm. no you don't got anything on me i'll read this material and i'll know it yeah but that and all that it all that right there is it's so you do, just so everyone realizes i'm not crazy that's just gamification that's just gamification in my head to make things fun mm. to make things challenging Right, I'll do that with anything all day long. Yeah. You, if I've got something to do, I'm going to have a good time with it. Yeah, and it makes sense. Yeah, we're going to have a good time with it. I'm fine. So when you hear me, you know, I was watching something on Larry Bird. Sure. And he was this, he's famous for talking trash to mm-hmm. all the other players. And, but he worked so hard. He was also famous for his work ethic. Yeah. But I think there's a little bit of gamification, right? When you go, I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to do this. Like he would come down the court and, be, and you know, he'd say like, he'd say, uh, here comes three. Who wants it? Yeah. Meaning come and try and guard me. I'm going to hit a three-pointer. And yeah. he would do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a little bit of gamification. People respond well to that. So that's me when I was going to college. As a 28-year-old man, by the way. I'm not talking I was an 18-year-old kid all worried about how I looked and right. what the party was. I wasn't worried about any of that. Yeah, yeah. I was in there to win. Dude. And in order to win, I made it into a game for myself. Yeah. Oh, you think you're going to ask me? You think that you're going to come up with a question on this reading material that you gave me that I'm not going to go know the answer to? Watch this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that way I'm actually paying attention. Mm-hmm. Actually paying attention to what's going on. As opposed to, I don't care, doesn't really matter, I'm in the Navy anyways, who cares what I get for a grade, blah, 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 blah. I could make those excuses all day. You can always take the easy path if you want to. It's always there. Yeah. But you just got to remember that it leads downhill. Yeah. And if you take the righteous path, well, then you're going to move in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah, but it still seems like you got all those methods, we'll say, like from, you know, like you weren't born with that, you know, kind of thing. Who like knows? It seems like. Who knows? You got. Yes, it does. See, it seems it like there. it's a choice that I make. Well, it, and it seems also like where, where you like. What you learned along the way, what right, how, that's what, it what, what lessons got reinforced? The, you know what lessons got re, re, reinforced for me? If I don't work hard, I'll lose. Yeah, that lesson got reinforced on me over and over and over again. If I don't work hard, I'll lose. If I work hard, I can do better. I might not win, but I can do better. And I'll tell you something else. If your attitude is like, if your attitude is only I'm gonna win. Like, that's why I'm doing this. You're not going to win every time. Mm. But let me tell you what your attitude can be. I might not win every time, but I'm going to get your respect. Yeah. You When you get done beating me, when you get done beating me and you shake my hand, you're going to mean it. Yeah. Because you, you had, you're, you're going to mean it. I'm going to push you at a minimum. That's what's happening. So if you beat me, and, and by the way, I don't hold it against you when you beat me. Mm. I respect. If you beat me, I know you worked. I know you got. I know you got after it, which is cool. And I don't. I don't hold any angst whatsoever. It's good actually, because I know that this guy worked harder than me, and I know I got to work even harder. So good for you. So that's that comes. That's learned. That's yeah. me learning as a kid. Oh, I wasn't good at this. And even I look look back at my life now, like I wasn't great at soccer. I never played soccer outside the soccer season. Other kids are running around dribbling the soccer ball. Whatever. Right. Going to camp, sure, whatever. Camp, yeah. I didn't didn't care enough. Yeah. Didn't well, didn't understand. 
the first thing that I got, well, I got very focused in the SEAL teams. And in the SEAL teams, because you're going against high caliber people, not all of them, but you got some people at the top of the bell curve that are freaking badasses. And if you're, if for me, so I got these incredible athletes. You know, when I checked in a SEAL team one, I'm going to try and think of this was probably 10 of us went to SEAL team one. A pretty good chunk of the guys went to SEAL team one. There were some guys in that went to SEAL team one that were total athletic studs. I mean, infinitely better than me in every category of athleticism, you know? And I knew like, okay, if I'm going to hang with these guys, I'm going to have to work really, really hard just to hang with them, Mm -hmm. just to hang with them, not to beat them, just to hang with them. So that idea gets reinforced over time. Oh, okay. If I don't work hard, I'll be at the bottom of the barrel. And, And then what it boils down to, if I'm at the bottom of the barrel, how much am I helping the team? Because if I'm if I'm a if I'm a detriment to the team, I'm now now what am I even doing with my life? Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. I do not want to be a detriment to the team. I want to be a positive to the team. And even though I might not be the best guy in the platoon, I might not be the strongest, the fastest, the best shot, whatever those things are. If I'm third or fourth or fifth in some of those categories, okay. Well, now I'm a benefit to the team. Now I can help, mm-hmm. which is what it all boils down to. And what it all boils down to is like, you know, you can make an excuse for yourself and live with it a little bit, right? But you can't make an excuse for the team. Meaning, hey, look, even in extreme case, well, you know, if I'm not that great of a shot and the enemy gets a shot off quicker than me, oh, well, I'm going to die. That's the the job I've got. That's the choice of, you know, whatever. But if you just play that out one step further, if I don't get this shot off, this guy will have the chance to shoot one of my buddies. That's you need to you need to put more rounds down range. Yeah, yeah. You need to shoot more. You need to get better and faster, faster on your reloads, faster on your draw, faster on your sight picture. That's you need to get better because yeah. you don't want to let your teammates down. Yeah. So when that's what's really driving you, that's powerful. That's more powerful than I just want to be the best. Yeah. I don't want to just be the best because you can give yourself a little slack in there. But when you look at it, and you say, "Oh, I don't want to let my teammates down. They're counting on me." That will make you stay up later. That will make you wake up earlier. That will drive you to try and be better. And that lesson that lesson on me got reinforced over and over again. And if I didn't work hard, then I wouldn't be. I failed something in buds called pool competency. Yeah. And I sh- I failed it, right? And I was going to say I shouldn't have failed it. And the reason I was going to say I shouldn't have failed it was because I, I was comfortable in the water. I'd done all the water stuff kind of first time every time, meaning not tying and life saving. I, I was good. I felt really comfortable. Yeah. And so when I failed it, I was sort of, I was deeply disappointed that I had failed it. And I was hyper worried that maybe I'm not going to make it through this training. And so we, me and a couple of the other guys that failed, we spent the entire weekend in the dip tank, which is the a little a little box that you fill with water to clean stuff in. Mm. And I don't even know that, why the, instru- the instructors let us use dive gear. I have no idea why. This was not safe. Mm. And maybe we just did it. I don't really remember. But we got in this d- dip tank and we, we did pool comp to each other for hours. Mm. And we just ripped the stuff off and ripped, you know, crushed each other until we went through the procedure so many times. When I went to retake pool comp, it was, it was easy. Yeah. It was easy when I went to retake it on Monday. So, what what lesson got reinforced? I need to prepare more. I need to work harder. I need to go the extra distance or else I can fail. Yeah. So there's another little reinforcement. I told you this one before. I failed a run in SEAL training. Yeah. Why did I fail a run? I failed a run in SEAL training because I paced myself and said, well, you know, I'll save a little something. And I didn't have anything to save. What I needed to do was run as hard as I could. Yeah. So, I failed the run when I paced myself. The next run, what did I do? When that when they said go, I ran as fast as I could for the entire thing. Because mm. you're not allowed to wear a watch. So you have no idea what the time is. Yeah, he's just cool. you, you just, and so you think about that. You think about when you're cruising on a run versus when you're running as hard as you can. It's hard to tell where that cruise level's at. Because am, am I running a six minute mile? Mm-hmm. If I'm cruising, am I running a 630 or am I running a 720? It can be hard to judge, especially when you're sore like your your body's sore so you know if you did if you did 500 eight count bodybuilders at three o'clock in the morning and then you go out and you run your run 
your pace, you might seem like you're running faster than you really are. So what did I learn?